All right, what's up guys? We're back. We're going to finish up hyperbolas. So I want to show you all the important pieces of a hyperbola that you need to look for and what some of the special properties of a hyperbola are. So let's start uh, at the second one down, actually. We'll look for the center first. And just like about everything in this chapter, this center is going to be here at 0, 0, and I'll label that C for center. And we know that it's the center because if you look here at our formula, there are no constants inside the parentheses with X and Y. Okay, and that would shift our center around. And then we'll go to vertices next. Now the vertices, it's almost like in a parabola where it's that bottom most point of the curve. I'll label that V for vertices. And if you notice, it's four units away from the center. And as you can see, I get that from the square root of 16. We'll also notice that that 16 is underneath the X. So just like in an, in an ellipse, it tells us to go four units away in the X direction. But also because that X is first, like we already looked at in the other slide, this X is telling me that uh, the graph, since the X goes first, that the graph opens in the X direction. So it opens in this uh, horizontal direction, okay? Now the transverse axis is what we call the axis that goes through the center of both of those hyperbolas and kind of splits it right down the middle. And let's also take a look here at asymptotes. Remember how we calculate those. We already looked at it. It's going to be the square root of the y squared denominator divided by the square root of that x squared denominator gets me 3 over 4. And so I bet if I apply that slope from the center, I'm going to go up 3 units and then over 4. And I'll make a point there. And I'll do that in the other direction as well that hopefully this works, hopefully my drawing skills are up to, up to the task here. And we've got one asymptote and of course the computer moved it because it thought I messed up for some reason. And I've got a second asymptote. <clears throat> so then looking at the foci, just like in a parabola, the foci are in the middle of those curves. And in this case it's at 5, 5 and negative 5. Or five units away from the center along that special axis direction, that transverse axis. And the special property, I'm going to get rid of a couple things here. The special property of hyperbolas is that no matter what point I pick on, on the hyperbola, if I draw a line from the focus to that point and to the other focus, if I call this D1 and D2 for distance, if I find the difference of those distances, it gives me some constant number. I don't know what number it gives me, but the cool thing is is that if I find that, like just pick any other random point, for example right here, and draw a line to each focus, and I'll call this D2 and D1, guess what, it gives me the same this same constant as that other pair of lines did. So that's kind of neat. Now the general form of a hyperbola, the center is still at HK just like all the other ones, and this is how we find the foci, or each focus, is we go C units away from the center, and we find it almost like an ellipse, but just a little bit different uh, formula from an ellipse. And I also want to let you know that the book is going to tell you about two different types of hyperbola, horizontal and vertical. You don't necessarily need to memorize both, you just need to know how to find the graph of each one as I'm going to show you as we keep moving through this section. Now you do need to know this, the way that we find the asymptotes is we get that asymptote slope by finding the square root of the y squared denominator and the square root of the x squared denominator and making that fraction right there, that slope fraction. So for example in this one like 19 through 24, let's go ahead and put it in standard form. Well, as you just saw, standard form has a 1 on the right side of the equation. That's our constant. So let me divide by 324 each term. And the way this works out pretty nicely is 36 goes into 324 and reduces to basically 1 over 9. 9 goes into 324 36 times. And it's just coincidence, by the way, that this 9 and 36 match. They don't always cross up like that and that's equal to 1. Okay, so that's how we're going to find that, uh, that standard form is to get that minus sign that tells us it's a hyperbola 
and it's equal to 1 there. Okay? Now let's go ahead and graph one. First, before I graph, I'm going to find the foci, which is a squared plus b squared. c squared is a squared plus b squared. And remember that a squared and b squared are just the denominator of each fraction. So that means that c squared is equal to 74. And if I just go ahead and take the square root of both sides, I get c is equal to approximately 8.6 or so. Okay, now that I have that and the equation, let's just go ahead and graph it. So I had x squared over 25 minus y squared over 49 is equal to 1. And the value of c for my foci was 8.6. So we notice that my center is at 0, 0. So I'll graph a center there, label it c. And since my first fraction has an x on top, that means I'm going to move square to 25, or 5 units away from the center in the x direction. So I'll go 5 units this way, and 5 units the other way. And those become my vertices because, remember, since the x is first, it means that the graph is opening in that direction. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that asymptote slope. Okay? And what I'll do here is I will just find the square root of the y squared denominator. The square root of the x squared denominator is 7 over 5. And when I apply that, I'm going to start at the center, and I'll go up 7 units and over to the right 5. And then I'll go up 7 units and over to the left 5. So up 7 and 5 in either direction. And now if I draw in these asymptotes, it's going to tell me where the hyperbola does not cross. Okay. And because the vertices are where they are, I know that the curve is going to look something like this. And let's see, the only thing that we're missing now is the foci. And the foci are... Let's see, they were 8.6 units away, and they're in the inside of those curves. So I'm going to start at the center, and I'll go 8.6 units on that transverse axis so that the foci are in the middle of those hyperbola, or hyperbolic curves. Cool deal? Now let's look at another one. This time, y is first, so it's going to be a little bit different. But if I still find c... For my foci, I'll get c squared is 16 plus 4, which gives me c squared is 20. And that might be a pretty light color. Take the square root, and I get c is about 4.5. Okay, now that I know that c is 4.5, I'll go ahead and graph it. I had y squared over 4 minus x squared over 16 is equal to 1 with my value of c being 4.5. And we'll graph the center, which is at the origin again, because there's no constants in there with x and y. I'll take the square root of 4 is 2, so that's 2 units up and 2 units down in the y direction, because that 4 is underneath the y. And now I'll take square root of, or no, I'll wait on that, 16. Now let's find the asymptote slope. It's going to be the square root of the y squared denominator, over square root of x squared denominator is 2 over 4. You can reduce that if you want, or you don't have to. It's going to apply all the same. We'll go up to and over 4 in each direction. And so now when I find those asymptotes, just like that, it gives me a pretty good idea of where this graph's going. So I notice I got this. And I got this, and I just need the focus now, or my foci, which were 4.5 units in either direction. So I'll go 4.5 up for focus 1, and 4.5 down for focus 2. Good deal.